Well, look, guys, thank you. Um, welcome to Director's Notes. And yeah, really excited to talk to you about an Irish goodbye. I've read um, a few interviews that you guys have done. So you were at a football game and you saw a pair of brothers and that was the inspiration. I was, yeah, I was there with my dad and yeah, we saw, I saw a couple of uh, brothers who I found instantly very compelling and uh, it was quite a boring match and I was, ended up sort of watching these two um, for a lot of it. And, and I think what was interesting was this, like the duality of, their fiery, normal, brotherly relationship, kind of hurling abuse at each other and at each other's throats, but then also this added element of care and responsibility because one of the brothers had Down syndrome and the other brother was there as, as, a, as a carer as well. So, yeah, we uh, we both found that, speaking about it when I got back the next day, uh, quite interesting. So then when it came to writing the script, did you have any direct experience of writing a script for somebody with Down syndrome? I, I'd written I'd written a play because me and Ross originally we we met at drama school and we were trained to be actors and we were both um, writing a lot of plays at the time and I'd written a play um, set near to my hometown in the in the West Country and uh, one of the characters or key characters in that was um, had a sort of de developmental disability so um, that was my kind of one ex one experience of it but and. You know, you you've been working in some sort of uh, special education needs schools as well. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd I'd worked with a lot of kids with special educational needs, so that was my kind of experience with it. And I think what really interested us, especially with this story, was there's a sort of um an empathy and an openness and an honesty that often comes with um the I, I guess not as jaded and cynical maybe as some others of us, and and it's really. When we saw, we find James Martin, the actor who plays Lorgan, you know, mm -hmm. that's so true for James. And I guess we kind of, you know, um, we're really interested in the idea that you've got one character who, f for those who don't know the film, you know, is watching these brothers cope with grief. So one character who is sort of, um, you know, very open and heart led in dealing with this. And then another character who is very sort of closed off, um, pragmatic and very, um, what would you say, you know? Um, yeah, very kind of repressed emotion. Yeah, repressed. That, what, maybe what the more sort of typical male struggling with grief kind of reaction um, tends to be. Um, whereas, as you say, Lorcan is the other end of the spectrum. Yeah, and then having those two kind of, you know, come up against each other felt like a good way to sort of, uh, a good kind of character study of, of that idea but also then they're these estranged brothers and they're coming back together and they're flung back together at like a really pivotal difficult moment in their lives um so yeah it just it felt like a, a little concoction of ideas that kind of came together yeah I mean it's it's brilliant and Lorcan his like one-liners they had me crying honestly at the beginning when you know he's talking about telling Jesus you know tell Jesus he's an arsehole I was crying so was that all scripted? How did you work with him on his performance to bring out that comedy? Yeah, I mean, mo most of it was scripted. James did throw in a couple of um, a couple of sort of his own improvised ones, but they they tended to crop up later in the film actually. And um, we 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 factored in some rehearsal time, which was really good. And I mean, obviously, you don't often get the luxury of that working on a short film with your sort of limited resources. But we felt for this, it was going to be really necessary. Just one, just one day, one full day of getting the brothers together and start building that relationship, start building that rapport. And it's important for us as directors as well to understand, you know, the best, the best kind of working environment and processes for, you know, for all of our actors, not just James, but like, you know, what's going to work best on this on this shoot. So that was that was really key, and I think that was very good for us initially to see how how well he was going to connect with the with the comedy i mean we kind of knew that anyway really? seeing some of the stuff and meeting him in terms of trying to tease the comedy out of james to be honest he, he's pretty much a natural comedian you know every yeah. everything he's he's full of jokes and um he sort of made, made everybody on set laugh all the time if anything there was moments where we had to sort of say this one doesn't need to be quite so funny you, you can play the drama of this one because he just wanted to joke whenever he got the chance and the sort of engagement between the two brothers um, is, is immediate. Did you feel that straight away? 
Yeah, I think, you know, Seamus O'Hara is just, I mean, we were very lucky to work with Seamus. Seamus is such a phenomenal actor. And when we got his tape and, you know, we sort of built it around gyms. But then obviously when you're casting brothers, it's so difficult. You really got to get the, well, any sibling's got to get that pairing really right. So we were really worried about that. And then we saw Seamus's, you know, tape come in and the shoulders just went down. I was like, right, there's there's the guy. He's, I guess he he was exactly what we'd written, but also I think, he brought some new ideas even just seeing his tape it was like ah well that's an interesting idea of the character and he sort of yeah he he's a a phenomenal actor and those two I mean in the first day rehearsal they just hit it off like immediately um and we I think that rehearsal time was as much about us giving them time to get to know each other as it was about you know running scenes and stuff um yeah we were like oh gosh we're gonna have to you know orchestrate you know times to get them together and like what if they don't get on like maybe we'll send them out to lunch together and then like within the five minutes we were like we've we've, we've lost them where you know they <laughs> didn't even need to worry they were they, they took that into their own hands and they FaceTime in the evenings to run through lines and things like that and just built built up a really solid relationship it's lovely to see and they're you know they're great friends to this day we, we all are yeah and I mean that does that just shines through beautifully in the film you can feel that immediately <laughs> so what about the location in old rural northern Ireland how did you yeah. find that how was it bringing all your equipment and team out there Yes, we shot in three kind of areas of Northern Ireland. We shot in the Sperrin mountain range, which is just outside of Derry. That was probably the hardest. That was the most kind of remote because it was like up a mountain. Yeah. So I remember a van getting stuck. That was good fun at like one in the morning. <laughs> it was on the first day of the shoot, so that was pretty tricky. Um, But then we also shot in Temple Patrick on a farm interior location and then a place called St. Field for all of our farm exteriors. So... Yeah, I, th- I mean, it was mucky. It was it was pretty tricky, but uh, no, it was it was good. It was my first time actually shooting in, in Northern Ireland, which was really nice because yeah, I'm from Belfast and stuff. But so. they're such a grounded and like you know long-standing uh, and like a kind of exponentially growing film industry there. That yeah. you know, it was all a local crew, and that you know these these people they're all used to these kind of you know as you say trekking up the spare mountains and stuff. It's a lot of people's bread and butter, so. It was really nice actually to be out on location and just in in the in the actual landscape that these these characters would um, would be in. Yeah, yeah. So I read that it was a five day shoot. How mm. did you manage to fit everything in to five days? And oh. with, I was looking as well, like some of your scenes, and I was like, I know Northern Irish weather. Like my mum's from Enniskillen, and I was like, you've got to battle with that as well. It's so funny. We um. The first thing we shot, as Ross said, up the mountains, we were on our way up and it started, this is in April, yeah. started yeah. snowing, just started snowing up the mountain. Yeah. And it, within about 15 minutes, the, the entire like mountain landscape was just covered in snow. And, and we were like, well, it's a, Chris, it's a Christmas film. <laughs> it's like <the> film <laughs> it doesn't take place over like six months. So we were like standing around waiting for it to melt. And then, you know, <laughs> that sort of northern irish rain came quite quickly and sort of washed it away and we we just about got it we had four seasons in the first two hours yeah. i swear it was yeah as you do in northern ireland so that yeah. was that's good but no it was a it was an intense it was an intense short film but i think what carried us through was it seemed like everybody was really on board with this story and um on board with putting you know 100 percent into it we were quite clear that we wanted to do something quite ambitious and had had a, a sort of sense of scope to it we want it to feel like you know it was kind of trying to push outside of its of its like maybe of its smaller means and stuff so we that's one where you know if, if you don't quite get the energy behind you it might fall fall a bit flat but luckily we had you yeah, know we had a very what we we always describe them as small but mighty kind of cast and crew that kind of carried carried it across the line with us yeah so and what about you two so this is your second time sort of shooting and working together how's your relationship developed through making this film we yeah well so I mean in terms of our background Tom and I met when we were 18 and we're working together uh in in different forms we we sort of as Tom said started in theatre we were writing plays individually um we're always giving each other notes and then we ran a little theatre company that kind of toured for quite a while so I think we basically developed like a sort of a shared shorthand and then a shared brain really and then when we we came to write 
for Scream. Yeah, we made our first short was a short film called Roy um, that was a very sort of contained little short and that was our first time behind the camera. Big learning curve, baptism of fire. And then this we did about six months later, um, which was a lot bigger. I mean, I think the the thing about having a co-director kind of partnership is it does speed you up in a big way in terms of like literally on set having the ability to finish a take we know exactly what we're after so we don't even need to speak about it it's like right you go speak to camera team i'll go speak to cast and then we'll you know we kind of swap over during the day it just kind of there's an efficiency to it uh and i think we prep so heavily uh, sort of in the in the kind of pre-production phase that means when we get on to set there's there's yeah. rarely any kind of, it, it kind of require you require that that preparation period is so much more vital because as you say it speeds us up but yeah. only if we've done the work beforehand because yeah. if we've not crossed all the, the t's and dotted the i's and then we get there and and we want to have a big discussion about the meaning of a scene or a shot or something like that. There's there's no there's no time for that. So we need to kind of be across things as much as possible before we get to set. And luckily, you know, from from writing together, writing the script together, speaking about the casting together, doing all of the things then that were the director's jobs as well. By the time we get there, usually we've we we've, we've covered all bases. But yeah, we'll um it's it's I guess, yeah, as you said, we've been working together for almost 10 years in very different aspects. So uh, whenever we speak to like funders or whatever, they're always like, what happens when you disagree? And they sort of like pick up and we're like, I don't know, like having a fist fight behind the camera, or, like a video village. It honestly, it's so, it I don't know. It's so, yeah, it's such, it's such a funny thought. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's all very, it's all very diplomatic. <laughs> oh, look at you two. I know. <laughs> So how did you move then from your shoot, you've got everything you need, into the edit? How do you work on that? Yeah, um, we went into the edit quite quickly. Um, we came over and I, we did quite a lot of the post-production in, uh, over in England, in London. Um, and, you know, our second film, our first film, both of them were shot during kind of lockdown, you know, but the first one was so locked down that we had to do the edit remotely you know via zoom and stuff like that which was was quite tricky actually and so it was nice this was our first editing an irish goodbye was the first time in the room with an editor um and you know we had a good couple of weeks working with our editor Stephen. and um yeah i mean we both really really enjoyed that that part of the process um and pulling putting everything together and we were really pleased with everything that we came away with so it was um it, it was one of those where it was just you know, a joy to, to be looking through all of those those rushes and, and pulling things together. And then we had a Northern Irish composer, Anthony, um, who uh, was working away on the score and brought very kind of um, particular, these kind of Celtic roots and things to, to that sort of um, element of it as well, which is really key because we didn't want it to feel too sort of twee and, yeah. you know, totally Irish kind of flute, but, but also, you know, you want it to stay true to the roots whilst also having this kind of slightly offbeat black comedy tone that we want to do with it as well and I think that's a really difficult thing to capture and I think I think Tony did that really really well so yeah we're, we're really we're always very lucky with with our crews I think and none more so in our post-production we've worked with people time and time again I think yeah yeah I think that's what happens people find a group who they work well with and who they engage well with and why you know if it ain't broke don't fix it yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly and then what about the sort of the colour and the grade? Because as we all know, Northern Ireland is quite grey and a bit miserable. But you match that really well with, like you said, those beautiful landscapes and the colour and vibrancy, I think, of the relationship of the brothers that comes through as well. So how mm. did you approach that? We kind of wanted to give it a bit of like an a bit of an Americana feel in a way. Um, and I think why we joked about being snowing because we, we we sort of felt like it had like a summer feel like, like a summer feel about it as a film yeah. um so yeah when we saw the snow we nearly died but in those landscapes particularly we wanted to create this kind of like real sense of like isolation and there's those kind of opening shots of the film we don't see any kind of funeral for the mother character we don't see any of that stuff so we wanted to create this very kind of 
somber atmosphere that really felt true to the guys coming back from this wake yeah. and then you know undercut it straight away with a kind of gag to set up this very like disjointed kind of are we in a tragedy are we in a comedy where are we and kind of let our audience know that it's going to be a bit you know it's going to be sort of you're allowed to laugh but also you might not know exactly when you know yeah congratulations on your nomination you are the only english speaking nomination so how does it feel to be representing and representing ireland and representing such a brilliant story it's a huge honor and like you i suppose we never set out making anything to think that you're going to come anywhere near any of any of these sorts of accolades or plaudits or anything like that so it's kind of beyond icing on the cake cherry on the cake i don't know what's on the cake right now but it's growing <laughs> but listen, we'll eat it and um yeah it's 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 crazy i mean we always say that you know one of the one of the nicest things about the short film industry is, get, is getting to go well filmmaking in any case is getting to go to festivals and see um and see all the work that's being made you know from the world over and you know we've been really interested in short film even before we were making it so i think we've definitely we see that the, the standard is kind of growing exponentially every year and there's so there's a more films being made in the stand like the, the kind of the scope and the quality of, of things is is incredible so you know we've a lot of the films that we've loved over the circuit have, have ended up um you know on on these lists as well so to be rubbing shoulders with them is a is a is a big honor for us and then you know to be to be representing you know as you say Ireland UK and in the English speaking film in the category is is is, is bonkers but what one we're really thrilled to be to be sort of carrying the baton for so you're working on an edit now is this your next film can you tell us what's coming yeah this is our third short film it's a little bit different it's uh, a period short film actually set in the 19th century uh, 1849 at the crossover of the, the famine in Ireland and the gold rush and it follows these two uh, sort of warring sisters who have fled Ireland to seek their fortune finding gold and they're not having a great time. So it's a bit of a it's a we're kind of branding it as like a psychological thriller slash kind of Celtic Western and we're working with <laughs> we've got a very 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 fortunate to have a, an amazing an amazing cast so it's a slightly more um, uh, maybe I don't know bloody than the previous <laughs> two but um, yeah we're we're really excited to get that finished and, and and to be shared sharing that with people as well